Good evening, everybody. Semi Thunder here. And tonight I wanted to do a video last minute. Um, so today I was down at my uh, community's farmer's market that they have every Saturday. And there's a little, there's a small side street where uh, different vendors set up different um, booths, I guess you could say, for themselves. And I'm the only person there that sets up um, a table exclusively with um, baseball and basketball cards. And so, uh, you know, a lot of the people that come by are people in the community. They're not, they're not serious collectors, but they um, really see what's on the table and kind of relive their childhood or um, kind of just remember some good times that they had with uh, baseball cards. And it kind of got me thinking that baseball cards, if um, you um, are a sports fan, baseball cards can have such amazing stories attached to them. And I think that's what, we're, what we probably really love about the, the hobby is how um, the stories attached to baseball cards really kind of bring us back. So. I had one guy come by today at my booth and he asked me an interesting question that might sound quite generic in its um in in the question itself but you know when you think about it it's really you really have to dig deep for an answer and he asked me uh what card in your collection is your favorite and while it sounds quite general uh it he he whenever he asked that question he would to somebody else the other he would the other person would think oh i have to come up with what's the most expensive card what's the most valuable card and what he was looking for is not so much the most valuable card but what is the most memorable card in your collection what can you say is a card that not that is not just a physical possession, but something that links you to something else. And he kind of he gave me a story about how he collected uh, a childhood favorite card of his, Felix Mantilla. And I remember Felix Mantilla as far as seeing him in my uh, sports collection, in my card collection. But he was mentioning Felix Mantilla and how he grew up and. Uh, Phil Spencer was a hero to him because um, they dedicated a ball field in his name and when he was a kid, and that sort of stuck with him. And then years later, he went to, I can't remember if he said he went to a flea market or a card show, or but he saw on the table that there was a Felix Mantia rookie card signed autograph. And it just sparked something inside of him. And lo and behold, he bought the card. And probably a majority of the sports uh, sports fans probably don't remember too much about Felix Mantilla. But because that there's a connection between this guy's childhood and finding that rookie card years later, there's just a deep-rooted connection. So it doesn't have to be a superstar ball player. It doesn't have to be um, like, you know, just... An over the over over the top expensive Mickey Mantle rookie card or you know second or fifty four you know uh, Mantle or something like that, and I thought I thought that I would kind of make a video about that tonight. Now my my uh, my connection my favorite card is um, I'm going to showcase it here and explain um, why it is my favorite card. So you can see I have the Willie, I have like a 69 Willie Mays here. That's not the card, but I, at the same time, I figured why not show a, the, the, the Willie Mays cards that I have because Willie Mays is my favorite player to collect. Um, growing up, I would hear stories through my grandfather. Uh, I don't think my dad was nearly, well, he was, I mean, he was old enough to be able to catch Willie Mays towards the end of his career to kind of understand, I think. And um, I think he probably did see him. If I had to take a guess, he probably did see him when he was 
whenever the Giants came into town in New York to the play of the Mets, or I think maybe he caught him when he was playing for the Mets in his last year. But nevertheless, I figured we'll go through these just to kind of re, you know, go over why he is my favorite. I love this card a lot, this um, Willie Mays from the 69 collection. Um, just, you know, Willie Mays to me is the quintessential ball player. He did everything. Great defense, great speed, just a great eye at the plate. Um, powerhouse hitter. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more. Willie Mays is the quintessential ball player. He was the true five-tool player. Um, this one was the one I picked up most recently, uh, the 59 Mays. Got this at a card show. Um, great design. Just a cool Giants logo on the bottom there, the signature and everything. This one I got from the flea market uh, months ago. From the this is the uh, sixty eight collection. Nice card there. This one I picked up for the twenty cents. I remember this one. I got this with the seventy, uh, the nineteen seventy one Willie Mays. Saw so the corners are pretty touched up, but getting this for twenty five cents was unbelievable. Um. Now, the last two cards, these are the ones that are the most special to me. And it really more has a family connection to it because uh, I was maybe, um, you know, 11 or 12 years old. And uh, my dad and I would go to the card shows at Westchester County Center in White Plains. And um, my mom would tell me, and, you know, I sort of remember it, sort of don't. I mean, it's been, you know, 20 plus years, um, that I would spend the entire day just running around looking at all the tables, all the vendors, and seeing what they had. And at time, you know, there were days where my dad was with me, and we would go and we walked around, and um, I think that kind of just that, that mentality of carrying players through generations kind of caught with me. And so Willie Mays, to me, was like a you know, even though he wasn't a childhood hero, um, I through you know just through gener through my grandfather through my dad, I kind of channeled that that uh, that sports fan in me for Willie Mays, and so one of the cards that I picked up that my dad bought for me was this 1972 uh, Willie Mays card, and I you know I like just I love this picture for, I love this card for a lot of reasons. It's just the the the, po the 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 posture that Willie Mays has the bat on the shoulder, uh, the design of the card just really special, and um, I can't give you the details of when, uh, of like you know, what table we were at and how much we bought paid it, paid for it, but um, all I know is we walked away. I walked away with my first Willie Mays card, and that was the seventy two, and I thought this was really cool. And following that, we, he, I think, you know, the, at another show, um, roughly around the scene, you know, like this would have been the late 90s when he bought this one, the 73, which I think turned out to be his last uh, base card before he retired. Uh, no, he, I think he was in the 74 as well. Uh, I feel like that was more of an insert, but this one, really special um, from the 73 set. And uh, yeah, same sort of story, same story. My dad bought this card for me. And um, both the 72 and the 73 cards um, were rediscovered in my mom's basement. She, and she held on to every card uh, that, I, that I've owned. She, um, unlike most other mothers that probably threw out baseball cards that were you know, in a collection, she kept both of these. And you know, as you can see, both these cards survived, you know, living in a basement in top loaders. I mean, I've since kind of changed these cards out to be in better top loaders and in sleeve, in better sleeves. Because they were sitting, you know, they were sitting in a basement in top loaders for many, many years. And quite frankly, they've survived and held up and with good condition. So I'm really, really pleased about that. But I think the moral of this video is to 
kind of go back a little bit. Think about what your favorite card is, and it could be for any reason. You can think about your favorite card for there being a story attached to it. You can think about it from just a you know visual representation of what the card means to you. It could be anything, but I think the, the you know that that question kind of stuck with me today, and I thought a video making a video of it would be um, it would be you know kind of fun to do and important to um, to address because I think. We all enjoy this hobby for different reasons, but I think there's an underlying factor that we enjoy this hobby because of the stories and the nostalgia that we all experience whenever we um, go to a card show or to a flea market and we see those cards that we really like or that we really want to have in our collection. But um, that's about it for tonight, guys. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. And um, definitely leave a comment below. I'd love to hear... Uh, what cards are your favorites in your collections? And tell me why they are your favorites, because I'd love to kind of hear different perspectives on it. So uh, thank you all so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to my channel and you enjoy vintage baseball and basketball cards, uh, hit that subscribe button at the end of this video, and um, y'all have a great night.